Have you ever wondered why bad things happen in the world and why God allows all those bad things to happen? But today I want to talk to you about that, how there's hope in God and that God has an answer. But before I get into the message, let's just worship God right now.
join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we worship you and we welcome you here today. And Father, I just pray in your precious holy name that you will anoint this word that you have put in my heart. And I pray that it will be able to minister to every single person that will be watching us and hearing us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Why do bad things happen? And why, do, why does God allow all these bad things to happen in this world? I mean, he's a loving God. How can he do such a thing? Let me, let me read you a scripture. This is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 21. This is the King James Version. It says, Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. This verse is talking about, I believe, the Son of God, the pre-existence of Jesus Christ himself. Who else has, has the power and authority to pardon someone's transgressions but the Lord himself? Here we, see, here we see, you know, God instructing the people and warning the people to obey him. In other words, not to re rebel against him, to, to listen to him respectfully. They must respond to his instructions. And his commands with faith and obedience. They are warned not to provoke God Himself. That that is not this is this this is to say that the people must not rebel. This is what it's saying: must not rebel against Jesus, God Himself, rejecting His divine lordship over their lives. You know, there's no one else better on how to run our own personal lives than God Himself. Who's, who's best to, to give us instructions on our lives but God himself? The reason that the people are warned to obey Christ and not to, not to provoke him is due to the fact that he will not pardon their transgressions. You know, the best definition of transgression is doing your own will, being rebellious, do, be rebellion, doing whatever you want to do, not wanting to do, not, not to follow any instructions. That's what rebellion is, you know, uh, going against authority. It is refusal to, refusal to yield to Christ's lordship. This is something that Christ will not tolerate. The reason that, that there's laws that he's given us is, is for, for our own good. You know, God loves us so much. Keep in mind that he gave his only begotten son. He was put on the cross for us because he loves us so much. But there's certain instructions that we must follow. We were all created to bring glory and honor to the Lord. That was the reason he created us, for him, for his glory. But what have we done in return? We have rebelled against him. We have turned our backs against him. And then we ask ourselves, why do bad things happen in the world? But one question that we don't seem to ask ourselves is this, God, how can you possibly allow me to sin every single day through my actions, through my thoughts, and allow me to continue to live and not strike me dead. Think about it, how forgiven, how compassionate God is towards me. There's things that I've thought about that I know that God should have struck me dead, but he didn't because he's so merciful. He's so great. He's so, he's so compassionate, so loving, so kind that he has so much mercy on me. And he has mercy on this world. But a lot of the things that are happening in this world that we see all around us, you see it all the time in the news, is because we have rebelled against our Lord, our Savior. We turn our backs against Him. We look for answers everywhere else except in the Word of God. We want our answers to be in the government, not in the Word of God. We were all created to worship Him. Think about it. How can a holy God allow me to continue to live? living this sinful life that I live, it's because of grace. I'm able to go to him and ask him for forgiveness. Many of, many of us believe that, that the problem is out there in the world, but it's not. The problem is with us. It's in me. We seem to judge God, God based on, on, on our point of view, on our logic. Well, God, if I were you, I would not allow that to happen. But think, let's go back to the question, why do you allow me to continue to live? Matthew chapter 55, verse 8. I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. New Living Translation. It says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. 
and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. We are not doing what we're supposed to be doing. That's living for Him, honoring Him, lifting up His name. If we were to receive at any moment the judgment that the moral statutes of our, that we deserve in our lives, we would immediately fall under condemnation. It is only when we confess our sin that we put on display the glory of God by declaring His righteousness. It is when we forgive others that we put His glory in the spotlight. We are proclaiming His compassion and eagerness to forgive when we forgive others for what they've done to us. God is so forgiving that he places so much emphasis on forgiving others. Also producing fruit. When we put God's character on display, when we produce fruit, fruit his glory is on display. John chapter 15, verse 8, New, New International Version. It says, this is my father's Glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You want to glorify God? Start producing fruit in your personal lives. That's how we honor Him. That's how we worship Him. When we give thanks, we glorify Him. I, I'm, I'm, I'm touching on, on, on some topics here that will bring glory into, the, into God. Psalms chapter 50, verse 23, New International Version, it says this, Those who sacrifice thank offerings honor me, and to the blameless I will show my salvation. In other words, so to those who live right. When we pray, we put the spotlight on God, on His goodness, on His great power, and on His gratefulness, on His greatness. We glorify God for His holiness, for His faithfulness, for His mercy, for His grace, for His love, for His majesty, for His power. We all, all of us, and that includes myself, we all struggle with sin every single day, as, even as Christians. But we do have the ability to overcome temptation. We do have it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says this, And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Sin can take place, places, place in many forms. In our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. James chapter 4, verse 17, it says this. This is the New International Version, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and does not do it, it is sin for them. We have been commanded to love God. In the scriptures, Mark chapter 12, verse 30, New Living Translation, it says this, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. We've also been commanded to love one another. Mark chapter 12, verse 31, New Living Translation. It says the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than this. With these standards that Jesus Christ has given us, it's clear that you and I sin every single day. It is only when we realize the extent of our sin that we realize our deep need for God. As human beings, we are free to rebel against the Lord. That's how good God, how good God is. He gives us liberty to do whatever we want to do. But we are not free from the consequences of rebellion. God would allow us to receive the consequences of rebellion. And that's the, that's the fruit of our own ideas. If we want things to go well, we have to stay within the boundaries, within the framework of the universe that He has created. Rebellion occurs when we say to ourselves, I won't, 
I know I should, but I won't. You can't make me. I'll do as I please. And then we ask ourselves, why do bad things happen? It starts with me. It starts with, re- start with us. It was rebellion that cast Lucifer out of heaven. Saul was removed from being king. Moses, unable to see the promised land. Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus, hanged himself for being rebellious. Rebellion is contradicting authority. God, I know better than what you're telling me in the Bible. I have my own way. That's rebellion. As Christians, we have, we have to remember that God is our number one authority in our lives. Rebellion exists in every human, in every single person in this world. Most people reject anything that doesn't reflect that, their own point of view. I, well, I disagree, God, with what, what you have to say. They think they have a better way than God's way. One far superior than the Word of God. That the moral authority of the Word of God. People unknowingly cut themselves out of, out of God's blessings by rejecting God's Word and set them, sentence themselves to a lot of suffering. Most of us believe that if we that we somehow deserve salvation. We search for things in ourselves to establish our righteousness. God, I'm good. I do this. I help the needy. I help out whenever I can. To prove that we are worthy of God's love. Some of us work hard, very hard, at being good Christians. Many of us, deep down, we believe that our obedience makes us worthy of God's love. Boy, if I work hard enough, maybe I can earn my salvation. If I help out. We cannot admit just how undeserving we are. I am. Because if we did, we would be amazed at God's grace. You see, a lot of the things, the bad things that happen around the world, God allows it. But God wants us to repent. But we're the cause of it. Remember when Adam and Eve sin? Sin entered the world. And every day we have the power to trigger that sin. It's we have the power and authority to what we put in our heads, what our, what our actions are, everything, every day. We have to take all those thoughts, all our actions to the cross. I have to do it every single day. Is it easy? No, but I have to. Paul is clear that we have done nothing when he says to deserve or earn our salvation. Nothing. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, New Living Translation. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace. Through Christ Jesus. We deserve nothing, but we have been given everything. Romans chapter 8, verse 32, New International Version. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, grace, grace, graciously give us all things? I don't deserve the grace of God. But I've done one thing necessary to receive it. I've acknowledged that I deserve God's wrath and can only receive His grace through genuine repentance. We should not be shocked at God's wrath against us. You know what we should be shocked at? At His grace. God, how can you forgive me? For what I thought, for what I did, you forgive me. We should be more shocked. Wow, what a loving and compassionate God you are. You forgave me. 
The holiness of God will always be overwhelming to an unholy sinner. Always. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. We see Isaiah observing the majesty of God. His immediate reaction is to see himself in a new light. It is only when we see his holiness, his purity. It is when we see ourselves in that light of the greatness of God. It is, that's when we realize how far we have fallen from God. He are say, I say as, you know, is see, see himself as being polluted. He says, he cries, I am a man of unclean lips. He sees himself unworthy, unpure to be in the presence of God. You and I need to have an encounter with the presence of the Lord every single day. He's the one that's going to reveal himself to you in a special way. How to live right, how to walk right, how to think right. Why do bad things happen? Because we cause it. When we allow it, we allow it to happen. I'm going to go ahead and close in prayer. But I believe that we all, God's going to give us power to live in victory. There is hope in God. There is hope. There's an answer for the world. And the answer is in, in, in the word of God, in, in God himself, in Jesus Christ, in the resurrection, on the cross. It's in him. The answer is in him. I'm going to go ahead and pray for you this morning. Heavenly Father, I just pray for every single person, Father, that might be feeling weak in their personal walk with you, Lord. I pray for those people who might be questioning you right now. God, why are you allowing all these bad things to happen? Father, I pray that you'll open their spiritual eyes. May they be able to be more aware of why things happen. And Father God, I pray that, that, that they'll be able to seek you and, and hunger for you more than ever before, Father. And I, be, I pray also they'll begin to see themselves in a different light. Father, that before we even begin to question what, why things happen, Father, let, let us begin to ask ourselves, why, why do you allow us to continue living this way and still have mercy on us? Father, I just pray that their eyes will be open, their hunger will increase, their thirst for you will increase, their love for you, their passion, their desire for you, and for holiness, I pray. I just pray this in Jesus' name, and I thank you, Father God, that, you, that this week, Father God, that your people are going to be changed and transformed, and they're going to have a different appetite towards you, Father. And I thank you, Father God, for meeting with us, and I thank you that this word was able to minister to many who were able to connect with us here this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. I'm so glad that you were with us here this morning. Make sure if you like the message, make sure you click like and share. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, make sure you stay connected with us during the week. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.